Kayla. I just then felt to share a few words about hospitality. Um, I know we've already had a couple of people shared because Julie came and we experienced hospitality by her just uh, modelling it. And Ness spoke a few weeks ago about um, hospitality and about being hospitable to Jesus. And so really thinking about it for me came out of moving house. Um, and it was kind of like a practical picture of hospitality for me because um, in the process of um, moving, we've been trying to turn our house into a home and just the aspects of the new house that are a bit inhospitable, a bit sort of unwelcoming and disagreeable and uncomfortable, um, particularly the smell of smoke. Um, we've been trying to make it more hospitable, more welcoming and warm and agreeable um, and comfortable. So it was that that made me think, well, in the Bible, that kind of thing applies more to the treatment of people than the treatment of a building. Um, and it's about making a person feel welcome and at home. It's quite interesting that it's today we've welcomed like three people into membership. Um, and I felt to talk about um, feeling welcome and at home and feeling wanted and being made comfortable and about being a host to a guest. Um, because it's interesting that if you look at the um, actual word for hospitality in Greek, it's um, got two bits to it. It's got phylos or philos, which is brotherly love. And it's towards um, xeno, which is a stranger. So hospitality actually, literally, the Greek word means showing brotherly love towards a stranger. Or, and the other bit of it is that hospitality is actually a tie that binds a host to a guest or a guest to a host. Um, so I just kind of um, asked really a couple of questions about hospitality in my own study. And the first thing I kind of asked is, well, for a Christian, is hospitality optional? And um, a fact led to Hebrews 13, 2, where it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels. And I just felt that be not forgetful did have an element of command about it. And it suggests that we need reminding of it. Um, it's something to remember, that something that's liable to be in our mind, that we know we should make people feel welcome, um, but we can neglect. And then I kind of wondered if it was more than just a case of um, a thought in a mind that we needed reminding of, but is it also a heart thing? Um, because forgetful sometimes has not just the connotation of remembering, but also of um, if you're forgetful, you can be completely oblivious or heedless or thoughtless, that it's not even in your mind in the first place. And it's part of maybe human nature to not consider others, um, especially particular people, which kind of... Um, um, I was thinking in Romans 12, 13, it does say that as part of our Christian love, we are commanded to be given to hospitality um, and to distribute to the necessity of the saints. So it is a kind of a command that if we are Christians, um, we are to be given to hospitality and it's linked with um, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice. So it kind of got me thinking about who should um, our hospitality be directed towards? Because if it's brotherly love to a stranger, well, who is the stranger in my life? And Xenos, the stranger, has got kind of three shades of meaning. And the first shade is a foreigner, that it's somebody who is of a different culture or nationality or race, um, someone that isn't recognized as one of our own citizens. And in the Old Testament, there's a scripture in Leviticus 19.33 where the Jews were told that as part of their law, foreigners were to be treated by believers in a non-discriminatory way. And the reason for that was to th that they were to remember their own experience as Hebrew people of being strangers or foreigners in Egypt. 
And in the New Testament, in Ephesians, um, it talks about foreigner in the context of being a stranger to Christ, um, that before we're saved, rather than being a citizen, we're in a position um, of being a stranger. And um, so in a way, hospitality, um, showing hospitality to a stranger is compared almost like um, the believer showing um, hospitality to someone who is a stranger and becoming a citizen. And the second kind of person who's a stranger is somebody who's a newcomer to the faith, um, somebody who's a newcomer to the congregation of worshippers, that they need to be welcomed and made to feel comfortable and at home. Um, just like Christ welcomed us into the citizenship of heaven through a relationship with him, we need to demonstrate that relationship. Um, and then the third person is the outsider. Um, the stranger is the one who doesn't fit in with the rest of us for some reason or other. Um, and Luke chapter 5 is quite a great chapter on the outsider. Um, and it made me think about people who were unpopular, like Zacchaeus, who was unpopular because of his occupation, that as a tax collector they were renowned for extortion. Um, it was a practice that kind of went on with those people. And Jesus, however, entered Jericho and he singled Zacchaeus out with acceptance and he said, I must stay at your house today. And I sort of kind of thought that was interesting that the opportunity was given by Jesus to Zacchaeus to show hospitality and he took it and he welcomed Jesus gladly um, and took on the role of a host. And even though others were muttering, oh, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner, um, Jesus saw that through the tie of hospitality, he was going to be convicted of his sin and saved and brought into relationship with Jesus. And the other people that are outsiders are people with a bad reputation. And in Luke 7, it talks about a Pharisee inviting Jesus to dinner. Um, but a woman of ill repute went there and she showed Jesus hospitality by bringing her an alabaster jar and wetting her, his feet with her tears and wiping his feet with her hair and um, pouring out perfume on his feet. Um, the Pharisees didn't show Jesus hospitality at all. Um, and Jesus commented on their lack of hospitality, and you can read about that in um, Luke 7. And another person who's an outsider is somebody with a sickness or a disease or a disability, and it made me think of the lepers in Jesus' day being outsiders, um, literally because of containing the spread of infection. And yet Jesus um, showed hospitality towards them in Luke 5. Probably haven't got time to look them all up, but um, it's on the tape. And other people who are outsiders are people in the wrong social group. And Jesus commanded the woman who came to him at the well. She was um, a woman and a Samaritan, so it's kind of a double whammy of being an outsider. And yet Jesus commanded her to show him hospitality and he invited her to enter into that host-guest tie. And she was taken by surprise because she was a woman and because she was a Samaritan. And yet he offered her something greater than hospitality because he offered her, through that tie, salvation. And then I asked um, a third question about why should I bother to show hospitality? And um, firstly, it meets a practical need. And in Romans 12, we're commanded um, to be given to hospitality because there are saints in need. And in Acts 28, verse 2, Paul shared an experience of his need actually being met by, by, by Byrians. Um, and in James 2, he says, verse 15, that without um, this, our faith is worthless. And Paul did also experience a lack of hospitality by Christians. In 1 Corinthians 4.11, he talked about being hungry and thirsty and naked, and nobody actually met that need. But also, as well as meeting a practical need, there might be a spiritual reason behind it. So there might be more significance to hospitality than we first realise. Um, um, in Hebrews, it talked about being entertained, entertaining angels. Um, 
And in Matthew 25, in the sheep, goats parable, Jesus made reference to um, the stranger and said that when I was naked or when I was a stranger, you took me in. So maybe it's spiritually significant when we show hospitality because Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these brothers of mine, it's as if you do it to me. And if you don't do it, it's as if you don't do it to him. And in that parable, it actually does mention about, I was a stranger and you took me in. And another reason is that we talked about love earlier on in the meeting and a mark of our faith is shown in loving people who are not necessarily our friends. And in Luke it talks about, um, Luke 6 talks about um, showing um, love towards unlovable people because, and there's a hint of reward in it, that anyone can show love to a friend or somebody who's lovable. Um, But it's perhaps less hard to show it to somebody who's not. And I also noticed in scripture that um, hospitality is a hallmark of spiritual maturity and it's a quality of leadership and part of attaining to being transformed into the likeness of Christ by presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. And it was a quality required of someone in the office of a bishop. So we're not necessarily into that, but in terms of leadership, in 1 Timothy 3, it says that a bishop must be given to hospitality and in Titus 1.8, it says a bishop must be a lover of hospitality. And interestingly, widows over the age of 60. In 1 Timothy 5, one of the reasons given for Christian families of widows over 60, reasons why they were not to neglect her, um, was because in her good works, one of the things that distinguished her was that Um, that made her deserving of ensuring her well-being in her old age was that she lodged strangers. So, um, and also because we're in the end times, that part of the ministering of the gift of the Spirit and stewardship of God's grace, there are going to be opportunities to do that running out because we're in the last times. And the last thing really was, um, well, what should my state of heart be? in being a host to a guest. And and notice two things in scripture, that firstly we're asked to be hospitable to each other without grudging. In 1 Peter 4, 9 it says, use hospitality to one another without grudging. In other words, do it willingly and spontaneously. Don't do it reluctantly and with resentment. And the other scripture in Romans 12, 9 talks about being hospitable without dissimulation, which I had to look up, and it means um, don't be false, don't do it, disguising your true motive. So it's actually possible to do the right thing for the wrong reason. And so we're called when we're hospitable to others to check our motive is pure, and it should be, as the word itself implies, out of love, um, not to get something back in return, or some other conditional factor. So I felt just from a prophetic point of view um, that maybe for us we should examine first of all our state of mind over the issue of hospitality. Are we somebody who's inclined not to remember? Um, Are we in need of a bit of a reminder? Or is it a state of heart issue? Are we actually oblivious and it doesn't occur to us? Do we lack generosity in our spirit? Or do we um, show hospitality for the wrong motive? Or with a wrong heart, out of resentment and grudging rather than being a cheerful giver? And practically, are we able to identify a stranger in our lives um, who might be a newcomer or a foreigner or an outsider? Is there someone that God's calling our attention to as an opportunity for hospitality? And maybe just in our own quiet time, we can ask in what way can I establish a host-guest tie or bond that might have in the long run a spiritual significance? So those were my thoughts. That's it.